everyone, my name is Katie and welcome to this video for the 11 plus maths practice questions. Now in this video I'm going to supply you with some practice questions that are commonly found on the 11 plus SATs assessments. So before I show you some practice questions, let's quickly have a look at what the 11 plus consists of. So in primary school, when children are about to leave the final year, which is year 6, they may opt to take the 11 plus. So this test is given to pupils who want to attend a grammar secondary school. Some teachers may encourage pupils to take the test just to give them the opportunity of attending a grammar school if they wish to choose this option. So generally, most pupils will be at the age of 10 when they take this assessment. And the test can contain up to four disciplines including maths, English, verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning. So here are a few 11 plus tips to help you prepare for your assessment. So tip number one, so allow for plenty of study breaks. So even if they're five or ten minutes long, okay, so this will help to refresh the memory and keep your child calm and focused. So keep in mind a child's attention rate is usually between 30 to 50 minutes. Active revision is a great way to stay interactive with the topic, so revision games and mock tests are great exam techniques, techniques to use to prepare for the 11 plus test. Stick a piece of paper up on the fridge highlighting all of the areas you wish to cover. Visual aids are another great way to take in lots of information, so mind maps, spider diagrams, flashcards, posters should all be used in preparation for the 11 plus. Mnemonic devices are a great way to um, to remember things, so the more personalised they are to you, the more memorable they will be. Reward your child if they are doing well in their practice sessions, so rewards will make your child continue to develop their learning. Practice past papers, so this is the best way to revise. So not only does it allow your child to practice questions, but you can also work on exam structure and timed conditions. Work on speed as well as accuracy, okay? So this is a point straight off the uh, last point I just made, okay? So exams are set under time limits and therefore the paper needs to be completed in the allotted time. So your child needs to be able to complete as many questions as they can in the time frame provided. So if your child is getting a question wrong, make sure they spend time working out how to reach the correct answer, okay? So knowing how to get to the correct answer is just as important as actually achieving the correct answer, okay? So make sure they do spend some time working out where they went wrong. So allocate more time on the areas that your child struggles with the most and make sure your child is receiving plenty of exercise and nutritious food to keep their brain working effectively, okay? So these are all great tips to help you perform at your optimum when completing the 11 plus SATs. And finally, make sure your child gets a good night's sleep before the 11 plus. So your child needs to be feeling refreshed and ready to sit the, sit the SATs. Reassure your child and tell, tell them how proud you are of their efforts that they've made already. Eat a healthy breakfast on the day of the test. So this is common sense, but it will go a long way to improving the SAT scores. And focus on the revision as opposed to the long-term goal, okay? So if you try and visualise the long-term goal, you're going to be distracted by your actual um, when when it comes to revising, okay? So just make sure you focus on the re revision instead of what you're going to achieve at the end. Okay, so practice question one. So simplify the equations. Equations are often found in the SATs. So here we've got 5w minus 5x minus 4w minus 2x, okay? So the best way to simplify this, which simplify means to make smaller, is to put brackets around each part of the equation. And remember, the operations in the equations will be grouped on the left side of the number, okay? So this minus sign here will be grouped with the 5x, okay? Because it's on the left side of this number. So, like I just said, so you will put brackets around each part of the equation, okay? So this makes it a lot more easier to understand. And then what you have to do is simplify and work out the um 
the calculation based on each part. Okay, so for here, you've got 5w minus 4w would give you 1w, okay? So you're working with the w's, okay? And then finally, you've got minus 5x minus 2x, which would give you minus 7x, okay? So the correct answer for this would be 1w minus 7x, okay? Because that will be your operation, because minus 5 minus 2 would be minus 7, okay? You're working backwards. So how to work it out, remember to break up the equation like I said, and remember the calculation will remain on the left side of the number. Okay, practice question two. So here we've got an operation machine. So we've got an input, times seven, minus six, and the output. So a function is represented by the following machine, like I've just said. A number is put into the machine, the output of the machine is 71. What was the number first inputted into the machine, okay? So you're working out what number would be here in order to give you 71 after doing these calculations to it. And the best way to do this is to work backwards, okay? Because you're trying to work out the first number, so you're going to have to work backwards. And in order to work backwards, you would do the opposite to what the machine is telling you. So instead of minus 6, you would add 6, okay? So 71 plus 6 would give you 77. And then remember, the opposite to times 7 would be divide by 7. So 77 divided by 7 equals 11. And you can check this answer by factoring this number into the equation. So if you put 11 into the input, times 7 would give you 77. Minus, minus 6 would give you 71. Okay, so you can double check your answer. So... You will need to work backwards, like I've just said, and because you are working backwards, remember to do the opposite operation to what is being shown in the machine, okay? So practice question three. So here we've got a picture of a triangle on a straight line, and it says work out the angles for A, B, and C. So for this question, you're going to need to know how many angles are in a triangle and how many angles are in a straight line. And if you remember from your classroom learning, an equilateral triangle will have 180 degrees and a straight line will also have 180 degrees, okay? So we we can use the 180 degrees and minus the 74 because we already know what this angle is, okay? So 180 minus the 74 gives us 106. And we know that this triangle is equilateral because we've got these two little lines here, which means... A and B are going to be the same size. So you can divide 106 by 2. It will give you 53 degrees. So this automatically works out angles A and B. And then finally, you would do 180 minus the 53 in order to work out angle C. And this would give you 127 degrees. Okay, so angle A is 53 degrees, angle B is also 53 degrees because remember it's an equilateral triangle and C is 127 degrees. So like I said, um, you need to know how many angles are in different shapes, okay? So make sure you go through different shapes and work out how many angles are in each shape. Okay, practice question four. So look carefully for the pattern and then choose which pair of numbers comes next. So we've got 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. And you need to work out the next two numbers in this number sequence. And here we've got some answer options. So you would need to circle which answer is correct. So is it A, 12 and 18, B, 13 and 21, C, 15 and 23, or D, 13 and 22? Well, you should be able to realise that the answer is 30, uh, B, 13, 21. And we know this because the number of sequences is progressing by adding the two numbers beforehand in order to give you the next number, okay? So 1 and 1 gives you 2. 2 and 1 gives you 3. 3 and 2 gives you 5. 5 and 3 gives you 8. So the 8 and 5 would give you 13. And then 13 plus 8 would give you 21. So just double check how the sequence is progressing, okay? So you should notice that to find the next number, you need to add the two previous numbers in the sequence. And this won't be the same for every number sequence. It could be adding 5, it could be 
multiplying by 2. It can be anything, okay? So you just need to work out the relationship between each of the numbers in the sequence. Okay, practice question 5. So a cinema has 27 rows of seats with 28 seats in each row. Tickets are £8 each. The cinema has sold tickets for every seat apart from 5. Estimate how much money to the nearest 100 the cinema will make. Okay, so to start off with, you would need to times how many seats in a row by how many rows there are. So 27 times 28 will give you 756. So that's how many seats there are. You would need to minus 5 because 5 of these seats are empty. So 756 minus 5 will give you 751. And then you would multiply this by how much each seat costs, which will give you 6,008. And the question is asking for the answer to the nearest 100. Okay, so 6,008 to the nearest 100 would be £6,000. Okay, so the cinema makes an estimate of about £6,000 to the nearest 100. And I've broken down the um, how to work it out there for you. So if you do get stuck, just double check your answer with the uh, process I've given you there. Practice question six. So what fraction of the tiles are shaded? Write your answer in its simplest form. So first of all, you need to work out how many sh shaded squares there are, which are 10, okay? And then work out how many squares there are in total, which is 30. So this gives us the fraction of 10 over 30, which can be simplified to 5 over 15, because you could divide both of these numbers by 2, to so give you 5 over 15. And it can also be simplified to one third because both of these numbers can be divided by five. Okay, so remember to simplify numbers, you need to find a number that goes into the bottom number and the top number of the fraction, okay? So practice question seven. So draw the reflection of this triangle using the mirror line. So here we've got our shape and we've got the mirror line going diagonal like so and you need to work out how to draw this shape in this part of the diagram. So first of all, from this point, you should work out how many squares it is away from the mirrored line, okay? So we've got from here, one whole square and half a square. So this would need to be repeated on the next side. So it'd be half a square, one square. So your point would go there for that one. Next, do the next point, so for here, so you've got one square, two square, three squares, four squares, and a half. So you've got half, one, two, three, four. So your next point would be there. And for this point here, so we've got one, two, three. So you would need one, two, three. And then all you would need to do is join these lines up. And that is the reflection of this shape using that mirror line, okay? So just make sure you work out how many squares are away from the mirrored line. Okay, practice question eight. So work out two fifths plus seven eighths. And there's an easy way to remember how to add fractions. And this is the crossbow method. Okay, so first of all, we're going to write the fractions like so. So put the number underneath like so. And then draw your cross. So it go through the top number of the first fraction into the bottom number. And then repeat it on the other side. And then... This cross looks like a multiplication sign, so what you're going to do is multiply the numbers that it's pointing to. So 2 times 8 would give you 16, and 5 times 7 would give you 35. And then, because you're adding, you would add these two numbers together, so, which would give you 51. So that's the top number of your fraction. And then you'd need to do the bow of the crossbow method, so which is basically just linking the two bottom numbers up together. So then you would multiply these two numbers as well. So 5 times 8 would give you 40. So you now have the fraction 51 over 40. Or as a mixed fraction, it would be 1 over 11 over 40, like so. Because this can go into that number once. We have the remainder of 11, and that number would remain the same at the bottom. Okay, so remember for adding fractions, remember the crossbow method. Draw the cross draw the bow, and then simply just multiply the numbers together. 
Okay, practice question nine. So Sam falls asleep at 9.20 and wakes up at 6.15. How long did Sam sleep for? So the best way to do this is to work in stages, okay? So don't try and work it out all in your head. So from 9.20 to 10 o'clock gives you 40 minutes, okay? So write 40 minutes on this side. And then from 10 to 6, that's 8 hours. So you'd write 8 hours there. And then you would add on the final 15 minutes to the 40 minutes there. So it's 40 plus 15 is 55 minutes. So Sam slept for 8 hours and 55 minutes. The best way for this, like I just said, is to add the numbers up in stages. Okay, practice question 10. What is the highest common factor of 48 and 12? Okay, so remember, factors are numbers that can go into a number, but it can be divided into another number. So let's work out the factors of 48 first. So we've got 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, and 6 times 8. And the best way to do this is to write it in ascending order, okay? Now do the same for factors of 12. So we've got 1 times 12 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, and 3 times 4 is 12. And then finally, all you've got to do is find the highest common number, which is in both of these sets. And as you should see, the highest number in both of these is 12. Okay, so that completes this short video for 11 plus maths questions. If you do want more maths questions, please click the link below this video or go on to howtobecome.com for a whole range of our educational products. Please subscribe to the channel, it is free. Please like this video, drop me a message if you have any questions and I do look forward to hearing from you. I wish you the very best of luck. Take care. Goodbye for now.